This is Torsten from AbletonLive.Ninja, and you are watching our fourth and final video featuring the iRig Pads, the iRig Pads editor software, and how we use that to change what the iRig is sending to our host application, Ableton Live. And then, of course, we mapped all of that information in a useful way for a live set that is geared towards performing in a live venue, like a DJ, not like someone who's producing beats in a studio. So we are going to perform this live. I'm going to explain what I'm doing as I do it. I will assume that you watch the other videos so that you know what knobs I'm referring to. You'll know more or less what we did. And the whole point of this video is just to show you that uh, to give you a taste of why I did what I did. It's a very basic setup. I'm not looking for the most glorious mix in the world. I just want to give you a few pointers on how you might use a setup like this so that you can get creative and you can create uh, a bunch of different variations thereof. So before we get started in that, a few things to note. I will not be launching anything with my mouse. I will be using it to show you points of interest only. Everything will be controlled. All of the music will be controlled from the iPad, the iRig pads alone. Also, this is what our default setup will look like every single time we are going to a new track. For example, the knobs are all the way to the far right hand position. All of the pads are in the on position. So on the iRig itself, these two pads are light orange. These two pads are dark orange. Again, we achieve that by turning the velocity to 100 here and 127 here. Uh, and we have the fixed value being on with the toggle being on. So that allows me to see on the iRig what's actually going on in Ableton. So I would not be panning around with my mouse in a live set. Uh, the only thing that I might be interested in seeing is if, for example, I have a track playing that I can't hear, I might want to see that. So instead of using the mouse, we created a function uh, or we created a, a connection to the iRig that if I press the pad 16, it shows me what's playing in track one. So there's, there's an example of that in action. Um, I'm not going to do that in this demo, um, even though this is in, a, in an actual live situation. This is where I'd spend 100% of my time. You would never see me switch over to the EQs uh, because I can see it visually, but you can't. And you need to see the screen. Let's get everything ready to play. I'm going to make sure everything's zeroed out, that my BPM is where I want it to be and that the crossfader is in the far right hand position. We will navigate to scene one and we will launch it by clicking the button. Uh, the, the, we're gonna click a knob. We're gonna click the crossfader knob and away we go. Coming to you higher in the mix. So there's an example of how I could use the DJ shout outs. I'm going to turn off the lows I'm going to slow this down a little bit. We're way too fast right at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to turn off the lows in track one so that when I launch this track, you can hear it. I'm going to give it some volume. You can hear it, but it's not going to compete with the other track in terms of the low end content. So it sounds like a really good mix already. I'm going to start to bring track one as loud as track two. Track two still has priority because the low end is coming from track two. Let's start to get rid of some of the highs in track two. This will sound like a crossfade, but notice the crossfader's not doing anything. Just this guy is. Now I'll start to crossfade. And on the downbeat, I'll give priority over to track one and the lows. There we go. I should have done that probably while this was in the middle, but who cares? All right, so now that we're out of track of track two entirely, we're going to reset everything. And we're going to turn our knobs all the way to the far right hand position. We're going to stop the track by clicking our stop button that we dedicated as pad two. And we're going to get ready to launch this clip using our scene navigation. 
I'm gonna leave the lows intact in track two, but I'm gonna kill them in track one when I launch this clip. This is, uh, this is going to be a crash, which is why I'm not gonna kill the lows. Let's give a little volume to that track. Here we go. And we're gonna get rid of some of the highs in track one so we can give more priority to track two. And maybe kill some of the lows as well. And at this point, in a set, I'd probably be making some announcements. Um, this is DJ Ism, you're in the mix. In the mix. Make sure you tip your waiters and waitresses, etc., etc. And we're all the way in track two. This is too fast for this track. Notice that I can smoothly transition to something a little more manageable with that fader. Really isn't a big deal to the dancers, other than it now feels a little bit more normal for this song. We're gonna get ready to launch our next track in track one. Again, make sure you stop the track that was previously playing and you reset these parameters. Let's kill the lows in this new track. We're gonna give it some volume. And launch it. And I did a little transition there, gave the lows to track one. And let's start to mess with the highs in track two, giving even more priority over to track one. And we can slowly fade this guy out now. Using my DJ shout out. And we're fully in the next track. If I wanna see what's going on in track one, or track two, either one, again, I can use those dedicated buttons. So this has just been a very brief introduction to what you can do in Ableton Live with the iRig pads and the iRig pads editor. Very, very robust editing features. It's so simple to use. So I do uh, highly recommend you get down to your local music store, give it a try. And uh, frankly, if you're not near a music store, just order them online. They're incredibly cheap. If this is your first uh, piece of control hardware, it's a great place to start. I'll let the track play you out. This has been Torsen from AbletonLive.Ninja. Thank you.